today is the third Sunday of Advent. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Marianne Cosell Joppa from Sister Parish and William Bill Bourne from Holy Cross Parish. Please know, Tuesday's Mass this week at Holy Cross will be at 8 a.m., followed by exposition of the Blessed Sacrament until 12 noon. Father Bill will be available for confessions. This week's second collection will be for Christmas flowers. We see the bulletin regarding the flower memorial. There's choir rehearsal on Tuesday night, and it is at 6 15. Choir rehearsal is at 6 15. Next Sunday, please bring your baby Jesus to be blessed. Make sure your name or identifying marker is on it. The prep Christmas pageant will be on Wednesday at 6 30 here at St. Mary's Sissy. All are welcome. Christmas wafers are available in the rectory or church for $3 donation for a package of four. We still need lecturers, altar servers, and Eucharistic ministers for Christmas masses. We also need to help to direct track during the parking lot mass. Please pray with me in the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, we pray this is the power. We are protection against the wickedness and the spirits of the devil. May God bring you the kingdom of your right, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into the hell of Satan, and all these spirits who proud of our world, seeking the kingdom of his soul. Amen. Our hymn is number 323. Ready to wait. Hymn number 323. Please rise and read Father Bill.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We don't talk about being happy. And we try and find fault with everything about our church. We hate our pope, we hate our bishop, we hate our priests. We hate the fact that we got to go to Mass on Sunday. We hate this, we hate that. <clears throat> and yet there's this drawing of people that says, well, got to get married in the church, even though that's on the downfall. Got to have a baby baptized, even though we don't necessarily see them after that fact. So what does it mean for us to be a joyful Catholic? This podcast introduced me to this new character by the name of Oswald Gunther. And why the name Gunther might sound like it's German, he was an American. And he became a Christian missionary to China before World War II began. He spent many years in China trying to tell or to teach the Chinese people about the joys of being a Christian, the joy of Jesus Christ, and how he could change their lives. And then at Christmas time in 1942, The relief agency that had sent him to do his missionary work in China, concerned about the world situation of World War II, called him home. His journey back home brought him to Mumbai, India, a port city. And he arrived in Mumbai on Christmas Day. Now, as he disembarked the ship that he was on, he noticed that there were two other vessels there filled to the gills with people. And he learned that they were filled with Jews. And anti-Semitism runs long and it runs deep. The Jews were not allowed to disembark the ship. They had to stay. And so Oswald Gunther goes over on the ship and he greets the people, Merry Christmas! And he's met with all kinds of dumb looks. And one guy says, we're Jewish. And Oswald says, I don't care! Merry Christmas! And someone else said, don't you get it? We're Jewish. And then Gunther says again, I don't care if you're Jewish or Buddhist or Muslim or Christian. Today is a holiday, a world holiday. And it's to be celebrated by all. So Merry Christmas. And he still is met with the same dull reaction. And finally he says, what do I need to do to have you at least find a little joy this day? And so to get rid of them, they said, we would like some fine German pastry. Well, lo and behold, Oswald Gunther departs the ship and he begins to scour the streets of Mumbai, India for a bakery and they bake him German pastry. But he needed to sell his ticket home in order to buy the pastry. He took the pastry back to the ships, fed the people, they were filled with disbelief he said, Merry Christmas again. And as he was leaving the ship, he heard, but we're trying to tell you we're Jewish. Oswald Gunther, many years
years later. Speaking of his missionary experiences in China, he told that story to his audience. And the Americans present, majority of them Christian, said to them, why would you do that? This was your opportunity to come home. And you sold your ticket to buy them pastry that they didn't even appreciate. And you were stuck in India until you could raise the funds to go home again. He never answered the question. But, and what he did that day brought joy in his heart. No one can make us happy. No one can make us joyful. Nothing we buy, nothing we acquire, nothing we can do makes us joy-filled. We have to become joy-filled on our own. We can see the beauty of a sunrise, but unless we take the time and appreciate it, it means nothing. I think every one of us complained about the 40 and 50 mile hour winds last night. But none of us appreciated the power of the wind. We do not appreciate. We are not joyful. Unless we become part of the moment. And so these people today are coming up in the gospel and they're asking John the Baptist, what should they do? That baptism of water means absolutely nothing unless they open their hearts and they become joy-filled. How do you and I become joy-filled this season? That's something that only you can answer. But you know, our Advent readings, our Christmas readings, they're all packed with joy and rejoicing. The Old Testament from Isaiah, rejoice and be glad. Annabella read for us once again so well from the prophet Zephaniah, rejoice. Your Savior is coming. Zechariah, the high priest, the wife of Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, greeted by the angel Gabriel, he said, Zechariah, rejoice, Elizabeth is going to bear you a son, John the Baptist. Mary goes to greet Elizabeth. And when the baby in Elizabeth's womb heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped for joy. The Blessed Mother, on her message from Gabriel, my soul rejoices in God my Savior. The shepherds, the magi, they were all filled with joy. Every one of us can either be joy-filled on Christmas morning, or we can be disappointed. Or it's just another day. Let's not look for the excuses to make us sad. Oh, it would have been so wonderful if it would have snowed. Oh, God forbid if it snowed. Oh, the turkey was great. No, the turkey was underdone. I really wanted ham this year. Let's stop. Let's stop. The lemon sucking, the hanging of the grape, and realize the joy of God comes to you and to me. Now let's build each other up. Let's not bring each other down. Let's not complain. We become a world of complainers. The people came to John the Baptist. And said, what 
should we do? We should find joy in God, our Savior. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come together with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was garnered of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for one baptism to forgive the sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The coming of the Lord is near. We have been encouraged to ask for anything we need with prayer and thanksgiving. Therefore, let us pray to the Father. For our Pope and all the pastors of our church, that they may guide us with sound doctrine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who teach the Catholic faith, that they may make Christ's words and deeds known to the people with accuracy and enthusiasm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in poverty, that they may know the comforting message of the word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people in our community, that they may be happy, always happy in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful who departed, that they may come to eternal life with Christ, especially Marianne Gisela Chalco and William Bill Baran, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Once again, we also remember all of our sick. Um, one of our parishioners is awaiting a, a kidney transplant. He was called to Hershey yesterday. I haven't heard back whether or not he was able to receive that kidney. Uh, he was called to Hershey about a month ago and got down there and the kidney was rejected so he could get the transplant. So we remember him in our prayers. I'd also ask you to remember my brother-in-law, Mark, who went into cardiac arrest the other day. Uh, they successfully revived him, but he's still not out of the woods. And also, you know, we try to, we have a lot of different attitudes on it, but COVID is still running rampant. It's running rampant here in our county right now. Uh, the hospitals are filled, uh, people are dying. And so we pray for all those sick with COVID virus 19. And we pray that at some particular point, it will all come to an end. We ask for healing of ourselves and for all these people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. Guide the world in true peace. And let us serve you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in the sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving works through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design he informed long ago, and opened for us the way of eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we hear to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs>
At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously granted us in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, Safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, both not on our sins but on the faith of your church, who graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Our hymn is number 311. Oh, come on, come on, man. Well, we'll start with verses 5 through 7. 311, oh, come on, come on, man.
pin number 503. I'm going pin number 503. My friends, today we bless straw. I invite you to take some home with you. 
You can add it to your nativity scene or you follow the old custom and tuck it under the tablecloth. By putting straw on the table, we make our homes like Bethlehem, whose name means house of bread. Whenever we welcome guests to eat with us in love, our homes become a place where God comes to live. Let us bless the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, who have made the earth fruitful with ripe wheat, which we have harvested from the land. Today we come before you with wheat straw. Soon we will use this straw to celebrate the birth of your Son in Bethlehem, for he is the bread of life, our Savior and Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Chuck Sajak had Vanna White. I have a lovely Samara and Matea. He doesn't know what he's missing. <laughs> Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thank you, God. Have a great day, everybody. You too, God. Thank you. Our hymn is number 316, O Come Divine Messiah, hymn number 316. 